You guys, I just want to let you know that I am the least qualified person to be doing Saint stories. <laughs> and I'm happy today to talk to you about somebody else who is also unqualified. My good pal, new friend, trusted companion, St. Peter, was kind of a mess. <laughs> you know, the Lord called him as a fisherman and he followed, but he had some bumps in the road from denying Christ in the midst of his passion to being questioned by the Lord for doubting the Lord. He was a follower, but it took him a long time to be all in. And I think a lot of us can relate to that. I can relate to that. The good news is, as you and I know, our vocation and the call on our life is not judged by our own merits or our own abilities, but just on the fact that we're called, that the Lord calls us to something and he provides the grace. So when I look at the life of St. Peter, who has been so pivotal to me these last few months, I'm just so moved by his courage and his endurance. You know, with his attitude and with his mistakes and you know, all the strikes that he had, it seemed like in the gospels, by the world standards, he wouldn't even be qualified to lead people, to make videos, Videos, to do this, to do what he did in his life, but he was able to because the Lord wasn't asking for his qualifications. He was just asking for his heart. And he gave the Lord and the church a heart that was moved and transformed by the grace of God. And I wanna share a little bit with you about that today. One way that St. Peter has been popping up in my life, besides being my little patron of 2021, he keeps showing up in this book that I've been reading, the Bible, if you've heard of it. And I'm especially moved by his witness in the Acts of the Apostles. Post-resurrection, post-Pentecost, he's out there with John and they're doing all the things. They're building the church, they're converting people, they are living their lives boldly for the faith. And one of my favorite instances is when they are entering the temple in Acts 3 and they come across a crippled beggar outside of the temple. As they approach him, the beggar asks, for alms, as beggars do. And they see him, and Peter's response is so beautiful. Acts 3, 4 says, but Peter looked intently at him, as did John, and said, look at us. He paid attention to them, expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, I have neither silver nor gold. What I do have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. Then Peter took him by the right hand and raised him up, and immediately his feet and ankles grew strong. He leaped up, stood, and walked around, and went into the temple with them, walking and jumping and praising God. I mean, how incredible. Peter, who didn't have anything physical to give this man, gave him the gift of faith by looking at him and encountering him as a person and saying, not by my own power, but by the power of Jesus Christ, stand up and walk. He gave this man a new life because of his faith. And soon after that, they are brought in by the authorities and questioned about why they were doing this, how they were doing this. And Peter says, if you're asking us about this man being healed, it was nothing we did. It was the power of Jesus Christ, the resurrected son of God. In his name, this man stands before you healed. You see it, you can't deny it. Everyone around sees the power of Jesus. And so it says to not spread this any further, the authorities told them, don't talk about it anymore. Stop talking about it, stop spreading this around. And Peter and John said to them in reply, and I love this verse so much, Acts 4.20, it is impossible for us not to speak of what we have seen and heard. And I think this message is so inspiring to me and to you today because so often we feel unqualified, like we don't have the means to spread the gospel, to move people's hearts, to change people's lives. But in reality, the Holy Spirit is the only thing that we need. And when we have the Holy Spirit, we're not just qualified to speak about the Word of God, it is impossible for us not to. It is impossible not to talk about how the Lord has changed our lives. I have been changed, you have been changed by the power of the Holy Spirit, and it is impossible not to speak of what we have seen and heard. So friend, if you're watching this, I want to challenge you today to shout it out, to share the word, to share what the Lord has done in your life because the Lord has qualified you and he will raise you up. One of my favorite things about St. Peter is before he met the Lord, he was a fisherman. 
After he met the Lord, he became a leader. He was appointed, he was commissioned to lead the church. And now he is the patron saint of shipbuilders. And I read that and I thought, seems like a kind of niche group. Peter was the first Pope, thought he would be something, like his patronage would be more universal, but here he is patron of shipbuilders. But I just think that that is a testament to what the Lord does in our lives. Peter used ships and boats so often in his life as a fisherman. I mean, it was essential to his job, but the Lord called him and Peter followed. And now he's not just a fisher of men, he's a builder of ships. And so wherever you are in your life, whatever the dream is that's on your heart, surrender that to the Lord. Give him permission to work in your life. He has, he can, and he will. Just know that you're in for something greater than you could imagine. And how could we not speak of what we've seen and heard? St. Peter, pray for us. Bye.